So are you just getting started building your model railroad? Do you want to see how to transition from a track plane over to your bench work? Why don't you stick around and see how I mocked up this, this say her secondary. Hello everyone, Joe from Central Jersey Conrail and Inscale. Welcome back. This is our construction series. This is going to be episode 19.5. So this time uh, we're going to be going over all the mock-ups and designs for the areas west of Mo Monmouth Battlefield State Park and that would be English Town, Jamesburg, and Browns Yard and then back connecting to the Big Helix. So over the last week and a half, uh, I've been busy uh, building up uh, the mock-ups for, for those areas. Now the buildings that I've been mocking up are only the key structures that are going to interact with the track plan. So a lot of these buildings I have gone out and taken pictures of, but you know they are in current day configuration. And don't forget, I'm modeling 1988. So the, the key structure in, in Englishtown, the Agway, um, I've mocked it up with the, the, the silos in there the, that were destroyed in the fire. So they may not be historically accurate to the foot, but you know I'm, I'm kind of just generalizing and it, to get get the idea. So don't forget the, all these mock-ups; they're going to be eventually replaced with uh, scratch-built structures. So uh, keep that in mind when you're looking at them. So they may change over time, as, especially if I get any more information as time goes on. So a big point I wanted to bring up to everybody is that you know that I think this is a very crucial phase because. When you're drawing out your track plan on paper, it doesn't necessarily translate uh, to the layout as you expect it on the paper. And uh, Bill Baronic had um, kind of cautioned me uh, in the beginning, in the early stages about that. And here I am now, and it, it's just very evident when I was laying out the track configuration. So, and I'll explain and point out those, po uh, those key points as we're going uh, through the tour. So, you know, some of the areas didn't turn out the way I expected them to but other areas turned out better than I expected so you know it's kind of a give and take as we go along and lay this out so with that being said let's uh, head over to English Town and uh, I'll, we'll start showing you how it's mocking up and uh, I'll explain as we go okay so um, the first point I want to bring up so this is the Agway in English Town um, and as you can see uh, there's the the silos now this building was uh, masonry block walls with an asphalt shingle roof. Uh, the silos from what I can tell were concrete. The only reason I'm speculating that they're concrete is because I'm going off of the Agways in the area. Um, most of their silos were all concrete. The one down in uh, Burlington and the one in Bellmead, uh, they had concrete silos. So that's where I'm kind of going with that. Um, and from the historical aerial pictures, you could tell um, kind of like on this side that there was an opening and you can kind of see the rounded structures So that's why I'm going that it had this open configuration But at this time I, I don't have any pictures of the Agway So if anybody out there is watching and was from English Town uh, that has any pictures of this Agway uh, it, it would be very helpful so they can try and get it correct so um, This is the retail outlet over here and then in the front of the silos uh, over there was um the truck loading area and then down um, down right in here this was another warehouse for the Agway now what I really like about this structure is once I mocked it up I realized that you know this is a very un unusual building for New Jersey uh, it kind of looks like a, a, a farm co-op from out in Midwest but it was right here in, in Central Jersey so that's why once I mocked it up I realized that you know it's a lot bigger than I expected um, so you, I want you, everybody to realize that when you're, if you're doing any kind of prototype modeling and you're looking and designing uh, something to model, it's, it's a lot bigger than you expect. So, and I even cut the, the, the warehouse is mocked up at 50 feet long. It was actually 94 feet and the main building I actually cut uh, 40 feet off of. So for an overall length of, um, this is 150 and that's 50 to make a whole overall length of 200 where the whole complex itself was like 260 some odd feet long so I cut off some uh, area so initially when I mocked up English Town um, I had the Agway and then I had this building to represent Triangle Lumber and then I was trying to squeeze in Bayshore Vinyl down in Tenet um, and then the English Town Fire Department here and as you can see it got very crowded so 
when you're in your design phase, this is when you have to be able to start making sacrifices. So the first sacrifice that I looked at was Tenet. So let's talk about Tenet. So Tenet is a little postage stamp town about five miles to the east on 522 of English Town. Now, when you have Tenet and English Town, kind of think of those as donut holes, and then the donut that's around it is Manalpan Township. So Manalpan Township was incorporated in 1951. And when Manalpan was incorporated, they absorbed the, the, the village of Tenet. So in Tenet, there was the Reed and Prine on Main Street. There was the post office um, there. And eventually they ended up building um, Bayshore Vinyl in a little industrial park uh, in the late, late 60s, early 70s or so. And it kind of bordered on the uh, of Tenet and Manalpin. So I was trying to squeeze Bayshore Vinyl in there for a traffic source. But as you can see, it got very crowded on this side of the peninsula. So I got to thinking about it and I'm like, you know, for the benefit of the overall operations and the look of English Town, I decided, you know, I'm just going to omit Bayshore Vinyl because it, it just doesn't fit and then the track plan was too tight and, and it wasn't going to uh, operate very well. So by, uh, by eliminating Bayshore Vinyl, I was able to actually build Triangle Lumber in a better configuration to move it out uh, to include the, the small office. Um, then I was able to have both crossings that are in English Town because over here this is Station Street over by um, crossing here and then this is the uh, they call it Conover Street but it's also County Route 527 so this way I can have both both crossings in there and um, I've taken a lot of pictures down there of trains coming through and what happens is as the trains come into this area both signals are linked so they both go off so this way I'll be able to tie them both in and it'll make sense so down here in this corner, um, this would have been this general area here would have been the border of English Town and Manalpin. And, and what I was trying to do here was um, North American Reese. North American Reese is out on Mount Vernon on the border of uh, English Town and Manalpin. So, but the only problem I was running into with North American Reese, besides it being a very large building, it's 400 by 175. Um, is the, the track configuration. I was gonna to have to make this odd turn and uh, the, 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 the turnouts weren't laying out properly and it was gonna kinda of not really make sense. The other thing I was looking at is North American Reese wasn't very active of a shipper. They only really received one car per month. So I didn't see the benefits outweighing the, the sacrifices. So that, at that point I decided, you know, we're gonna get rid of North American Reese as well. So with eliminating North American Reese, what I was able to do was cant South Main Street this way and move the English Town Fire Department in this direction so that you'll be able to see more of the front of the building and the apron of the fire department. Um, South Main Street runs this way and then there's a big open field over here, which is the old Doc Woodruff um, uh, farm. And then it'll open up some space in between Agway and the, uh, the fire department to put some houses and, and some other structures in there just to kind of tie it together that it is, a, it is a suburban community. This is really just the only business area down by the tracks. So as you can see here, I sketched out the track plan. So um, this line here is the main line. And this line here is the siding. This siding served the Agway and then it continued across Conover and also served the Triangle Lumber. So Triangle Lumber would get their loads here and then there was a gate in the fence and they'd come out and unload. Um, in Agway, they had a boxcar door here where they would put their boxcar and then they had a, a, a unloading pit here for the silo and that's where their uh, covered hoppers would get delivered. Okay, so when I was out, uh, doing research and taking pictures, I found this third track here. Um, when I looked in the ZTS charts, I couldn't find any evidence of this passing siding here in English Town. But when I started looking at the historical aerials, uh, I, could, I could see it in the aerial photographs. And what I believe this track was, was when, when English Town had a, um, a station back in the 60s and 50s, I believe that the, there was this passing track here, and I think it existed into Penn Central. So what I've done here is I've taken the liberty of putting this track back on um, because it's going to be beneficial for operations. So 
when the SA31 heads down the freehold and they're pulling 13 cars, they can dump some cars here on this siding and so they'll have more room to do the runaround at freehold and make those deliveries. And then on their way back, they'll pick these cars up and, and switch this area here. So that's why I went ahead and put this runaround back in. So um, like I said, this is Conover Street. Um, and then this street back along the uh, backdrop is Park Avenue. Um, there were some houses over here. There was a lake and a park across the street over here. Um, I'm, gonna, there's all, I'm also going to try and put a water tower up on the backdrop here because English Town had a big water tower that, uh, that you could see pretty much from all over town. So that's pretty much how English Town's mocking up right now. So now we're going to continue west on the main line and we'll head down to Jamesburg. Okay, so this is the, the town of Jamesburg and um, Jamesburg is a rather long town. I, I counted approximately 12 blocks of buildings and streets. Um, so there's no rail served businesses in Jamesburg. It's kind of just the trains going through. So I thought this was a good scenic element. Um, and it also leads to the, uh, the Y over at, um, with the Amboy secondary, which eventually leads into Brown's yard. So I thought it was a, a good place to put just a scenic element in, uh, you know, not so many, sidings and businesses and all and, and railroad related stuff and just some area to put some buildings in and, and have the trains pass through. So one of the key things that you'll see here is this bridge. Um, there is a, a spillway uh, which creates Manalpin Lake in Jamesburg and then it spills into a creek that goes under the railroad tracks and under Route 522 in the back. So what I've done is I've mocked in, uh, sketched in uh, 522 and I curve it around to the backdrop to disappear. Um, and this intersection is kind of key design element here because it's really nice. There's the, the railroad crossing signals and they're tied into a traffic light here. So I thought it was an, a good idea to kind of include this. So the other key design in, in Jamesburg is that the train runs through the center of the town and you have Re West Railroad Avenue and uh, Route 522 is called East Railroad Avenue. So there's streets on both sides. Now down on the main street, the main drag uh, in the back here is kind of these houses that were converted into businesses and they kind of got small businesses. I know they have like a, um, an appliance store, they have a... Um, uh, a uniform shop, they have a liquor store, they, they, there's the post office, and the businesses are kind of on the first floor of a, looks almost like a two-story house. And then the second story is either apartments or offices up above. I'm not really sure. I think they all vary from structure to structure. So that way I can kind of put those businesses, those businesses in there along there. Um, I'm not going to include every single business because it's not going to have room. So over here at the far west end of town is where Railroad, East Railroad Avenue and West Railroad Avenue come together on this road here. Um, I don't know what this road is called off the top of my head right now, but oh, on this side of this five point intersection, it turns into Route 522 going down into, into Dayton. So over on this corner of 522 is the um, Jamesburg Veterans Memorial Park. It's kind of a neat little uh, area. It's got some trees, uh, they got their memorial, and then there's a big flagpole. I've mocked this out to actual size uh, on, on the, uh, the map, but I'm looking at it, I'm gonna have to cut back on it because it's just a little too big for that area. So what happens proto uh, on the prototype is that the, the track curves and then joins up with the Amboy Secondary heading towards, um, towards Brown's Yard. And then there's a Y and it goes the opposite way towards Dayton on the Amboy Secondary. So trains can go in either direction. Because of the way that the, the, the track plan laid out, this is actually a mirror image. So trains coming out of Jamesburg to get the Browns go this way and trains going to Dayton would have to go this way. But in real life, it's actually the opposite. So I've kind of just taken the modeler's license to you know get it to fit in here. And because the Amboy Secondary is going to curve around through the backdrop over there. And that's going to be heading towards Dayton. So at this point, I kind of indicated in the past that I was going to be doing something special for the Dayton branch. And uh, 
I did some research and it's not actually the Dayton branch. It's it's the um, the Amboy secondary that curves this way and goes over the turnpike down and through Dayton and then eventually connects up with the Northeast Quarter over in um, Monmouth Junction. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cutting a hole in this backdrop, cutting a hole through the wall and going into the family room out there. And in that family room area, I'm going to be building a small shelf about four and a half feet long and about 18 inches wide so that I can put a few of the industries over there at the Keller Industrial Park in Dayton. So that'll be another area. And I'm going to cover that in, a, in its own series. And when we start construction on that in a couple months, probably in the fall, you're going to we're going to follow through from beginning to end. We're going to start mocking up. We're going to put the bench work and the track work. And I'm just going to keep right on going and doing scenery and structures and everything. So, because um, I want to get that area out there finished because that is the family room. I don't want that to be a eternal construction project that takes years and ever, it's an eyesore out there. So I want to get that done as quick as possible. So even though the, the main layout in here, the Sayher Secondary, isn't going to be finished for some time with structures and scenery, you can follow along as I'm building scenery and structures out there and I'm going to get that done. So that's kind of the, the, that's the, the big news. That's the reveal is that, that, that this will be its own series and you'll follow along in parallel with me building this layout in here. So by doing this, um, I've been able to tie in the Y here. So um, I'm actually going to put the Y in as it exists. And this way, it'll give me an opportunity to turn trains um, by using that tail that goes down to the Dayton branch. Oh, I keep calling it Dayton branch, but it's this, the um, Amboy secondary. Um, so allowing the trains to run that way so I can kind of do some maneuvers in and out of the Browns yard. So also one quick thing that I didn't um, go over is that as the track curves around towards the backdrop in that corner, um, Route 522 is going to go underneath the tracks because uh, there's a, um, it's kind of an Art Deco uh, concrete overpass. So I'm kind of going to adopt the um, Walther's kit to fit in there because I kind of like that. I think it'll look good in that corner as the track leads through the, uh, the backdrop. So it would be just a, a way of um, dividing, the, the, uh, dividing the scene up using that bridge. So just to just another thing is that the main line here coming down the Amboy Secondary and the Browns Yard, it was all electrified back under the Penn Central. And up until 1992, they still had the, uh, the Canton areas and the lines up, even though they weren't energized, they were still there. So I'm going to be building the, uh, the electric lines coming down through Browns Yard. So the line comes down here. Um, this area here is the, gonna, the front three tracks, track one, the main, track two and track three they're going to be the um, arrival departure area so it's a double-ended sidings for trains to come in from either direction and um, then this is going to be the uh, the yard classification tracks are going to be stub ended um, most of the tracks are looking at between 48 to 51 inches long um, they may even be a little longer because uh, of the way the track curves back there I can fit some more track in, in the back so this will give me um, a lot of yard capacity. Right now, my estimates is approximately 90 to 100 cars capacity, which is plenty of room for what we need. So these two buildings sitting here, um, these are the buildings that were at the Amboy Engine Facility. Um, Amboy Engine Facility was originally a Pennsylvania Railroad facility. Um, what they did there is they serviced the diesel locomotives the, and the electric locomotives that were used on the New York and Long Branch. Then after the formation of Jersey Transit, the facility was turned over to Jersey Transit and they used it to service their trains uh, the, after the commuter runs because South Amboy up until the late 80s was a um, locomotive change out where electric locomotives would come off the Northeast Corridor, they would be cut off and diesel would be put back on for the run down to Bayhead. So, I really like that engine facility. I want an engine facility here on the on the Sayher Secondary so that I can uh, kind of showcase all my locomotives. I kind of like the idea of you know having them all uh, at the facility to kind of be displayed. So even though it's five miles to the east of Browns Yard, I'm going to tie it in. Um, I'm looking at the this building and that 
coal, that coaling dock uh, was converted over to hold sand for all the electric and diesel locomotives. So I'm looking at tying them into Brown's yard and then they're going to be sitting right in the middle of the large helix here. And then the what they'll do is they'll tie into Brown's yard uh, back here on this track here. So what I've done is I've added an extra track and tied it into the back on track 10. Um, and this will be two purposes. This one, it'll be the scale here for, uh, so I can put the Boulder Creek engineering scale in, and it'll also tie into a, a lead heading out towards the engine facility. I tried to fit it in back here, but it was just too cramped and I didn't get enough uh, capacity where I think I would only fit like, you know, three or four locomotives on each track. But by running it this way and putting the facility over top of the, the, uh, the helix off on this side of the camera, I was able to get a longer run of track to store some more locomotives and make it look a little longer. So the other key element here is track two. Um, track two starts at this end of the yard down here on this turnout here and it runs all the way down and it's one of the arrival departure tracks and it comes all the way down through this end of the yard and it actually turns into the yard lead. So what is happening now is this. So the main line is going to curve around off of the helix and connect with this line here. Now I've been conferring with uh, Bill Baronic and with uh, length of the yard lead. So what Bill Baronic says that he does with his track planning is he usually makes it 10 to 15 percent longer than his longest track in the yard. So my estimates is my longest track is approximately 50 inches. So if I'm gonna do the cheap route and just say we'll do 100% of my longest track, that'll take it, it needs to go back to here on the backdrop, or oh, see over there. So what I'm gonna have to do is rip out this last section of track and have to put a turnout in, and then I have to put a second track in coming off this helix to turn around, and then it'll hook up down here on track two. So this way, track two can serve as the switching lead. So now we have a dedicated switching lead for the yard. So the crews can work in the yard and not affect the main line. Now, so I said it's supposed to be 10 to 15% longer than your longest track. Uh, this, by my estimates, uh, through my math, I think it's like 50, 49 inches. So I'm going to have to live without the other 10 to 15%. Uh, we'll have to just make sacrifices, you know, as we're switching. So again, um, the uh, electric overhead lines, the Canton area will come down through here on track one. Um, it covered track one all the way through the yard, all the way back down to the other end. So I'm going to have all that up. But what I'm looking at is in the yard itself is that um, I'm not going to put the actual lines up because then I can imagine it'll be very cumbersome for crews reaching over, you know, to uncouple cars in the in the classification area. If they have to reach over these lines, so I'll probably just end up in the yard area itself, is just putting up the poles and leaving the uh, the lines off. So down here in Brown's yard, there wasn't many structures uh, that I have to worry about. So um, it was just the I went ahead and mocked up the engine facility and the sand tower because I thought I was going to try and fit it in that area where it's sitting now, but it's going to end up back over there on top of the helix. So. Not really too much to look at, just most of the track. Um, as you can see, I'm using my paper copies of my turnouts to kind of lay out the track configuration. Um, now the other key design here is this turnout right here on the main. So as you can see, there's that line that goes off uh, right there. Well, that's going to be the diversion for the Galipsy branch. So the Galipsy branch is going to kind of cheat around this corner here and a run off where there's nothing right now and then um, back along that wall um, right around this area here and all the way back to roughly right over, I keep blocking my pointer, right over here. So there'll be another shelf layout about 18 inches to 20 inches and that will be the Galipsy branch and the Sayreville Sayre running track. Um, we'll have the Sunshine Corporation over here 
and then we're looking at national lead over in here and the par lin yard so that's going to kind of wrap around to connect back in over this area here so but that's that we're going to get started on that in episode 21 uh, i got to get in most of this track um laid in so i know where i'm going to build that Okay, so there's the mock-ups for Englishtown, Jamesburg, and Browns Yard. So a um, couple things that I didn't cover. Uh, James, uh, Browns Yard. Um, there's not many structures in Browns Yard. I think the yard office was um, uh, it was actually two construction trailers and there was an antenna, so I didn't mock that up. Um, I'll probably just use a commercial kit available to um, fit it in somehow. Um, Brown Yard itself was um, not a rather large yard. Uh, they had about 13 tracks. Um, I did scale back on a bunch of stuff. I only have 10 tracks total. Um, I think they had six run through tracks and like uh, eight, um, eight or so uh, stub end tracks. I cut back on the run through tracks and just cut it back to three because of space considerations. Now, the other thing is um, when you're mocking up is it's not so much the depth that's the problem it's the length and especially with the yard um, the the yard ladder is putting all those turnouts in a row and it gets too long and then you run out of straight space to put in more turnouts so that's kind of what the uh, the limitation is there on the yard so but I was able to get a good mix in uh, to, to get a good representation of Brown yard and I think it's gonna have plenty of capacity uh, to switch our trains for uh, for the layout the other thing about Browns was um, not only was it that long section in there um, that I'm modeling, but there was also a, another receiving departure area to the east of the yard that consisted of another four tracks. And I believe those tracks were somewhere in the vicinity of like 1,800 feet long. So they had a lot of capacity there for inbound and outbound traffic. Um, but I totally omitted that because um, there's no way I was going to even get anywhere close to fitting that in. Structure-wise, in Jamesburg, most of those structures for those uh, businesses and buildings, I'm gonna try and do some kind of kit bashing with a commercial kit. I'm not gonna get into the, the, the get slowed down by scratch building every single one of those buildings. So it's something that it represents what Jamesburg is. I did indicate that, you know, Jamesburg is approximately like 12 blocks long. And you notice that though, that doesn't look like 12 blocks. I forgot to mention that, yeah, I'm cutting a lot of those blocks out because you know, I just want maybe one or two blocks or three blocks just to give you an idea of the town. Um, no reason to go in depth of making the whole town uh, modeling in itself. So doing up these mock-ups, I think, with the brown craft paper and doing the buildings out of foam core allows you to play around with uh, things and get ideas of how big the buildings really are. Do you need to scale back the buildings? Um, track configuration, uh, how it's going to come together and how it actually looks. Uh, in real life and I think it's very beneficial for when you're trying to decide you know what areas do you want to omit um, you know when we started putting it together we found out that you know it didn't make sense to squeeze in a North American race and Mount Vernon Road over in Manalpin so I just made the uh, just made the decision to cut it out as much as I wanted to keep that little area um, it just wasn't gonna work out and then tenant um, you know made the determination that there's no reason to have tenant. It's we're squeezing everything in and allowed me to make Englishtown a little longer and get that second street, that station street crossing in, whereas before I was gonna be cutting that out. So overall, I think it, it turned out, it, I lost some things, but I think I gained some things in return. And then initially, initially on paper, I didn't think that I was gonna be able to get the whole Y in, um, in west of Jamesburg. Uh, but actually when mocking it up and sliding things around, I found out that I was able to fit it in. Now all those curves that you see, the curvatures, I was using a 15 inch radius uh, template for all my curves over there. So, um, you know, it's, it's, not the, it's not the ideal because I think pars you know, doing this layout, I think I'm learning the ideal for modern railroading is, um, is 18 inch radius and in scale and you can do, uh, represent some good tracking but i think and your minimums really shouldn't be any more than 13 inch uh because uh anything tighter than 13 inch in my mind you're gonna have a lot of trouble with the 89 footers the uh 86 foot uh, box cars so that's why i'm kind of like in between that 15 inch radius um i think it's a good mix of the minimum you know so we get some maximizing of our our uses of our space but still having a large enough radius that it it's conducive for the larger cars and then yeah uh, today i kind of had to let the cat out of the bag i was going to try and keep that uh that little uh 
Amboy secondary section over in the family. I was going to try and keep it uh, in my pocket for a while, but um, yeah, what's going to end up happening is when uh, in episode 20, when we start mocking, uh, uh, putting in the sub road bed and doing all the track work and stuff, I'm just going to cut the road bed, cut the holes and stick it in there so it kind of sticks out to the other side in the family room. So that's my reference point to start for that next section. And uh, when I get the time uh, over to summer here, I'm going to get, get cracking on that. And like I said, I, I don't want to be messing around with that. I don't want this to be a, a big eyesore in that family room. I just uh, So I'm going to get it done. And all the buildings down on the Amboy Secondary over there in uh, South Brunswick, they're going to be uh, kit bashed. I'm not going to waste time with scratch building because, well, I'll get more into it when we get started with the series, but all the buildings have been destroyed. Um, BASF uh, over there by the Turnpike has been demolished. The... Um, the uh, AeroPress facility has been demolished, and the um, the cold storage, the, the Monte uh, cold storage over there, uh, that actually has been changed hands, and it's now another type of distributor, and they ripped out all the refrigeration units and stuff. So I can't even do historical research. I, I put an email out to the companies, you know, seeing as BASF or, or Air Products can kind of help me with some historical reference, and they never responded. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead with what I remember and what what uh, aerial photography I can find because there's not many rail fan pictures over there so uh, maybe if someone's out there watching you have some pictures over in the Dayton South Brunswick area over near those facilities uh, maybe share them with me because they could help me out in my modeling but if I don't get anything I'm not going to get bogged down in the details like I did with Seba uh, Geige and some of the other facilities I'm just going to go ahead and kit bash them together and make them look presentable and, and move on from there so that's going to put 19.5 in the books. So one last topic to cover before we go our separate ways. Uh, this Monday is Memorial Day here in the United States. Uh, I know it's the unofficial beginning of summer. I know a lot of you are going to be spending time with your family and you have the day off. But on Monday, um, when you get ready to crack that first beer, jump in that pool, or throw them, them burgers on the grill, I want you to give me one minute of your time. And in that one minute of time, I want you to pause and I want you to think about and remember all those who died in defense of our great nation. Uh, those individuals made the ultimate sacrifice and have never come home. So just take the time out of your, uh, your fun and just remember those who paid that ultimate sacrifice. And just remember, they are lost, but they are never forgotten. So with that being said, that's all I have for you. We'll see you next time on Central Jersey, Conrad Allen Inscale, Episode 20. Thanks for watching.